Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue has been a series that I've been avoiding for a little bit way too long. I was actually on record for saying this. I always found Lightspeed Rescue so boring. I am so sorry. I've always found Lightspeed Rescue as so uninteresting. I don't, I'm gonna put it in D tier. I'm sorry guys, y'all may hate me for this, but I'm just speaking my truth. Wow, young Este, you were so misinformed, young boy. My only experience with those guys at the time was just seeing them pop up in legendary battle like, who are these old looking jits on the screen? Where are the Disney Rangers at? Huh? Huh? Wait a hit! No. Yeah, I made a lot of Vine references back then. I don't know, it was a trend. But I think it's time to finally embrace and give a chance to something I've been missing out on my whole Ranger career. Lightspeed Rescue in the last few years has been stated on the internet to be an underrated series. And seeing how the impact of the show has been felt in the community, I needed to find out what makes this so special. So it's time to find out if this is truly an underrated season. It's time to go Lightspeed. No rescue needed. Wow, that last pun was really bad, huh? Hey guys, it's Esther here, and welcome to my review of Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue. A season that seems to be quite overlooked when you take into account that it's squished between two amazing seasons. Also, spoilers ahead for Lightspeed Rescue. I don't know why you would care about spoilers for a show from 23 years ago, but I'm just letting you know, it's in the video. After six years of the follow of continuity from Mighty Morphin into In Space, they wanted to step out of this timeline and try something new. Lost Galaxy was the first step towards that, having a new cast not directly connected to the previous seasons. However, they played it safe by A, having the show take place in space, like the last season, and B, having elements from in space, the last season. But with Lightspeed Rescue, they tried to flip that formula upside down in some different ways. For those Mighty Morphin fans that were still watching the show when Lightspeed Rescue came out in the year 2000, it wasn't a hit. Let's read some reviews from back in the day on IMDb. This guy, Mike2000, said, When will this end? When will Fox realize Power Rangers isn't popular anymore? Maybe never. If Fox makes one more Power Rangers show, I'll freak out. Bro seemed annoyed. Fox, call it a day already. I don't even know why I'm writing this. It's just a waste of time, but most of the people out here will agree with me. The whole Power Rangers fad is dead. The show was once fresh, but too many changes were made. Plus a bond turned it into a cash cow and milked it dry. And that was in the year 2000. The show was only on for seven years. Derek86 said, oh my God, I thought the show would be better than this. I didn't even know if the people that wrote the scripts were the same people that created Mighty Morphin Power Rangers seven years ago. On a scale of one to 10, I give it a zero. The show definitely was very different from the last seven years of the show, but I think it really was a good thing. It all starts with the suits. That's the main eye catching thing of the show. They got these visors that like show their eyes and not their mouth that was carried by the Super Sentai series GoGo5. But they had this pattern that looked like... What is that? An umbrella? How do you describe that? Also the opening of the show... Gas. Gas. <laughs> but now when I ask on Twitter like, hey, what is your opinion on Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue? The show gets a lot of love. They calling it a 10 out of 10 show, underrated goat, top tier. I just had to find out what was up. And in this show, the Rangers aren't just teenagers with attitude. They're young adults with jobs and careers. And sometimes they're blasting out of their holster, hard AF. But now we hit the angle of let's save some people. Usually Ranger teams would split off to save people off screen, but this show and its team was perfect for rescue missions as it was pretty new to the show. And we see a lot of that. Mostly burning buildings and people saving them from that, but hey, they're saving people and we're seeing it. They don't teleport into battle like in the old days, they jog into it. But we don't just get a rescue theme for the show, we have demons. <laughs> it's a little demon time. Which by the way, those demons destroy a lot. Like there's an exploding building like every episode. Is this how Power Ranger was like before 2001? Like imagine an apocalyptic death toll, you gotta repair your streets. And everyone is scared of demons every day, but they're just chilling, living in the town. The Power Rangers will get you, we'll save you until your building gets destroyed. There was literally an episode where a monster just says, I hate buildings, and blows it up. I never liked that building. Ah! But with this rescue and demon thing combined, it definitely does make for a unique show. But before we move on, you know what's stronger than the Lightspeed Rescue? 
It's the E Squad. Subscribe and ring notification bell to join the E Squad today, the biggest growing Power Rangers fan base in the whole entire world. And hey, E Squad comment of the day, leave a funny comment down below, put the E Squad in it, and you might be in the next video. The first episode opens up on a moment similar to the Mighty Morphin Episode 1, with two archaeologists opening a tomb releasing demons into the world. The demons here are definitely unique, differentiating himself from the evil space aliens of the past. The arc in the show was an overlying command of the demon world, but there definitely was some backstabbing and family drama here, which made it interesting in the second half of the show. And it definitely could have been something that developed more. The first half of the show just felt like they were dubbing over Super Sentai footage, ex except for Viper, of course, who was a brand new actress. Also, the worst actress of the show. A lot of people on Twitter agreed with me. Once it's recharged, I'll lay waste to Mariner Bay, so our Queen Bashura will rise again. You need to leave. Viper felt like a cartoon character in the wrong show. Like the acting was just why. But once the real Big Mac demon of the show comes in, Queen Banshira, who by the way, still pretty mid, it kept the stakes above the show and we finally get some original villain fights. But it still quite made them inconsistent, even in the end. There was even this character Jinxer who was playing like all the cards, both sides. It was like a sitcom character having two dates to the prom. But my favorite part of the villain dynamic is really just that battle between Olympias and Diabolico. <sighs> It was sweet. But there definitely was a serious vibe to the whole villain side of things, which definitely made this lighthearted cast of characters a lot easier to enjoy. As they're the complete opposite of demons, a government military organization. <laughs> I really don't like that aspect of the whole thing, having the government be involved with ranger teams, but hey, the cast is pretty cool. Let's talk about it. Carter would grow up, to be honest, to become one of the best red rangers in the show, according to fans. Carter was initially inspired from a traumatic night that he had in a burning building, attaching himself with a firefighter that saved him, and that ultimately influenced him to train as hard as he can, never taking breaks, just doing anything to be as good as him. While that does sound weird at first, having him be connected to an icon such as Captain Mitchell definitely made him one inspiring character, even though a lot of times he would felt 2D just being a basic action hero. I guess that's a nitpick though, but hey, how to be rocking them jeans every episode? Truly a red and blue fashion icon. Some may even call him to be the Power Rangers Clark Kent. I can see that working. Captain Mitchell, by the way, is probably one of the best mentors in Ranger history, being the perfect mix of a bossy manager and a supportive father. Quite literally on the latter, by the way. He wasn't trapped in a tube like Zordon and would actually be able to be on the field with the Power Rangers and support them when the situation permits. We definitely did get some fire characters in the show. No pun intended. Actually, let's intend that pun. There was also the stunt pilot Green Ranger, Joel, who had a romance story that was kind of hit or miss in the show. But hey, can't fault the man's persistence. Even though he was low-key a stalker, there was a weird episode, multiple weird episodes, but with Joel, there was a weird episode where he was stalking this guy who thought he was uh, pulling up and trying to be Mrs. Fairweather's boo thing but it was actually her brother all along. Wow, Joel, nice. But hey, this space cowboy would be on screen passing out flyers and being cocky. It was just kind of fun to see. He did get his fair share of focus episodes too, mostly focusing on his love, like I said, Mrs. Fairweather, who is the main scientist and tech person of the Lightspeed Rescue Team, which is probably one of my favorite characters in the show too, just because they're vital to the Rangers' effort through her intelligence and her science knowledge. Other rangers are just gifted their weapons through magical sources, but in the Lightspeed Rescue Team, they had to create them, work on them, and test them. There was even this one episode where Mrs. Fairweather was working on a vehicle for Carter that would like fly in the sky, which by the way, made for a crazy episode because it would malfunction and it would send Carter through time. How smart do you gotta be to accidentally like invent time travel? Time Force was a whole year away. That was a weird though. That was a Groundhog Day type episode. Kelsey was an extreme sports athlete, but also coming from a rich family. Boo. But hey, I guess she was kind of deferring from her family because she didn't really mess with that rich side. In that same episode where she was defying her rich family, we saw Kelsey's rich grandmother rocking hockey pads, launching herself towards the monsters. I laughed a little, I have to be honest. That's just one of the kooky parts that makes Power Rangers Power Rangers, but 
And Kelsey as a character, I, I don't think we really learned a lot from her. She was kind of annoying. Guys, I kind of talk like this and I'm really excited the whole time. Let's, let's do something. No, we get told. <laughs> And that's kind of where the problem for Lightspeed Rescue is for me. The other rangers were kind of put in the sideline, especially ones like Chad and Dana. Chad was a lifeguard at SeaWorld? Damn, bro could have been the Jungle Cruise host or on the Jaws tour, but nah, bro gotta work with them animals in, in captivity. There was also an episode where he saw his master telling him how disappointed he was for becoming a Power Ranger instead of pursuing martial arts. And this is where I had to stop because I don't think this works in any multiverse. Any context, I don't think anybody would be disappointed if you were a Power Ranger or saving the world. So in spite of Chad, they had an actual training montage with the monster of the week looking like a whole Rocky reboot and everything. Of course the monster would betray the master and the master would finally say, oh Chad, you're the best, but like, come on. Very For real right now? now, bro. Chad also had an episode where he was dating a mermaid. Yeah, that was like two mermaid episodes in there. One of them actually featured a CGI King Neptune. What is that? Yeah, King Neptune. Ocean man, take me by the hand and lead me to the land that you understand. It looked like it came straight from the MMPR 95 movie. It was uh, ugly and hideous. But then we get Dana, the pink ranger of the team, who wasn't chosen by Captain Mitchell by their efforts. Dana was just Captain Mitchell's daughter. She's kind of a paramedic, she wants to become a doctor. And that's kind of all we know about Girlie. As soon as I saw that one of her focus episodes was a whole clip show, I know she was doomed as a character. She was a model for the episode too? Uh, kind of hinting at, hey, influencer's bad, but hey, that was in the 2000s. Sounds like the TikTokers of today. Spoiler though, she did become a doctor in the Time Force team up episode. I didn't see Time Force yet, maybe I will for another video, but I read it and yeah, she became a doctor in like a year. And there was a whole thing on the Ranger Wiki talking about how that's not possible. On the Ranger Wiki here it reads, to become a pediatrician, one must first finish four years of medical school and then three years residency. Before residency hours were lowered in July 2007, medical students often worked 100 plus hours a week and rarely had time for another job in the 68 remaining hours of the week. Therefore, Dana becoming a pediatrician in one year is inconsistent with her requirements as it is unlikely she could have done a pediatric residency while at the same time being a Lightspeed Pink Ranger. Woo! A lot of math and a lot of facts. Thank you, Ranger Wiki. I will say, she did have one of the best focus episodes in the show quite in the beginning where she was on a bus going to this exploding volcano mount or whatever bus that would cut between little Japanese footage or whatever. Inside the bus, was a guy who just robbed something, he got money, and he got a gun. We saw a gun in Power Rangers. He didn't shoot anybody, but he was definitely threatened to shoot somebody, and Dana saved the day. It was a mess, but you know what was also a mess? Her brother, Ryan, the Lightspeed Rescue Titanium Ranger, which was great for the show because it actually was the first ever Power Rangers exclusive Ranger specifically made for the show. They got help from the team of Plex and the Super Sentai people to make this team and Ryan felt right in line with the rest of the Lightspeed Rescues. He was first introduced as an evil ranger and it definitely was different when he compared to stuff like Tommy in the past as he was raised by the villains to destroy the heroes. And it was a great concept because he wasn't evil, he was just sad. He hated his family because of the years of lies Diabotical told him. What had happened was Captain Mitchell was in an accident with both of his kids and Diabolical pulled up and was like, yo, I'ma save one of your kids, but he'll be my kid now. And Diabolical took Ryan and grew him up to become an evil ranger. Ryan would eventually steal the Titanium Ranger Morpher, become, the, become that dude, become him, had some great fights with the ranger, but hey, of course, he did become good. And also one of the best parts of making a titanium ranger real is that they used one of the swords from the Super Sentai series, the Max Solar Zord, that's the American name, and basically gave that to Ryan to become his sword, as in the original Japanese show, it was just like an AI controlled Zord. And that's great and all, it was great seeing the titanium ranger fight alongside the rest of the Lightspeed Rescue team. They kind of did a great job uh, separating the Lightspeed Rescue in terms of the Sentai footage and then Ryan having his own footage kind of splicing them together. I thought it was really nice until um, Ryan left the show. What? Ryan wasn't in the show for a good majority of the show. 20 plus episodes, maybe even 30, I don't even know. 
Bro was literally gone on a quest in the desert for the demon origins and we literally check up on him like twice in the whole rest of the season before the finale. And I know they had to do a lot of work to get the titanium ranger in there in fight scenes in the first place but seeing how they neglected him for over half of the season it kind of felt really dirty. I did really enjoy one of the episodes of Ryan though, the feathers episode where they had exploding feathers in the show. I just thought that that whole thing was crazy. You've got to retrieve all of those feathers. But luckily enough, he saved the day, but you know, Diabolical had a curse on him. Originally, it's like, hey, if you keep morphing into the Titanium Ranger, we'll kill you. Or this 2D snake that pops out your back will kill you. That was very Roger Rabbit of Power Rangers. Comment question of the day though, for those watching Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue, what was your favorite part of the show? Leave a comment down below and hit the like to lock in your answer. 1500 likes and I'll do more videos just like this one. My favorite parts of the show was just the whole Titanium Ranger arc. It was just episodes full of intense story and it just got serious. Like Ryan and, and Captain Mitchell were like fighting in the same place. They had the accident. There was about to be another accident too. Like it was crazy. Oh, and the feathers. Can't forget the feathers. But yeah, with Titanium Ranger gone, the Max Solar Zord then really being controlled by the Rangers in their Megazord, the rest of the season was okay. okay. <laughs> it was just focusing on those five Rangers, really. There's also a lot of Power Rangers traditions in there, of course. The Power Rangers do get their own set of bikes. We had Vibra on the in-space little vehicle thing. It's now an evil thing. Thought that was nice. There was cool instamorphs seen throughout the show. I liked seeing those. The Red Ranger got a battleizer five episodes before the finale of the show. It all makes sense now. It was just a bike on a dude. Literally just a bike on a dude. Jungle Fury did that again later, but that wasn't a battleizer. Nope, nope, nope. It was also the first time that both Blue and Green Rangers got their own kind of battleizer thing. They even got them before Carter did. Those were the mega battle modes. Also, like the Battleizer, only used twice in the whole show. What the there was also a team up with the Power Rangers Lost Galaxy. The previous season, Lost Galaxy, was the first in a chain of different seasons having a back to back little crossover thing. But with this second one, the Lightspeed Rescue Lost Galaxy, um, it wasn't good. They didn't really do a good job focusing on the Lost Galaxy Rangers, seeing how they are now connecting them with the Lightspeed Rescue team, playing off on their different uh, personality traits, and just focus on Carter and sometimes Leo helping this little girl find her mother in an e e a building with evil people taking over the building. It was cool seeing the Lightspeed Rescue and Lost Galaxy team, you know, morph together, do their little roll call, theme song intensifies. Also, there was a weird thing. Lost Galaxy, they had a new morph. They just used the morph from their Sentai, Ginga Man. Why? I'm still not really sure. But hey, we saw the Lightspeed Rescue and the Lost Galaxy Megazords in there too. I thought that was nice. Drakina, the main villain from Lost Galaxy, is back. She did nothing. Her mouth was covered like that Lightspeed Rescue suits. It was a different actress. Just became a little evil slurring monster thing. The monster was literally sp spurring Dragon Zord like sounds. Also, throughout this whole special, we didn't get any mention or see the Magna Defender, the Sixth Ranger of the team, and Titanium Ranger. Come on, man! It could have been perfect. It could have been. But let's talk about a better two-parter, that being the whole series finale of the show, which the episodes leading up to it were quite good. The hype was definitely there. We had our original villain versus villain fight, not seen very often in the show. We even had an original Megazord footage, a full-on base destruction, and of course, a fight in the city with explosions galore. He needs some oh, and an accurate portrayal of a panic attack seen in media by Captain Mitchell, who, seeing his whole aqua base being destroyed, literally froze. It that was boy stuck, stuck in time. time. It also featured the use of the Life Force Megazord, which was a Megazord used like twice and used the life force of its pilots to use it. I don't know why they put so much emphasis on it, but hey, Titanium is back from his little quest. They know how to seal the demons back in their little tomb, and they did just that. Our rangers would save the day and end up giving up their ranger powers while still being heroes. And throughout all that mess, I still quite enjoyed Lightspeed Rescue, and it definitely is underrated in comparison to other Power Ranger seasons. It has something for everyone. It has a little bit of camp, has a little bit of serious, has a little bit of funny, has a little bit of lessons. It got them bikes, it got them megazords, Battleizers, 
With its focus on real life heroes and how anybody could lend a helping hand, and to show some love for this show that I neglected for so long, I decided to interview one of my friends who was inspired by Lightspeed Rescue and just helped his whole Power Rangers and real life career and he would eventually become a real life hero himself. To the interview room! And now, I'm here with a good friend of mine, a Lightspeed Rescue lover, and a true hero, some may say himself. I'm gonna let him introduce himself now. What's up, Este? Uh, for those that don't know who I am, my name is Austin. My nickname, ever going with in the Power Rangers community since high school, goes as Army Ranger. And uh, I guess I'm kind of mainly known for hitting the morph poses pretty well and being a bit financially irresponsible with getting stuff for the collection. Can we diamond test it real quick? <laughs> diamond test it. Yeah. Two zirconium. Beep. Beep. For some context here, I actually bunked with Austin in our trip to PMC. It was a great time hanging out with him and everybody else. But wow, oh, yeah. getting to know uh getting to know you that weekend, seeing how much toys you got. Um oh, man, yeah. <laughs> and all just the morphs, the poses you would do. I even did uh what was it, die the die ranger pose with you? I think so, yeah, yeah for your um, big vlog video for PMC. I failed at that, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> I just want you to talk to everybody about, hey, what's your Power Rangers history? How'd you got into the show? <clears throat> and uh, what brought you to, to the community today? I honestly still remember like the very first two memories of Power Rangers that I had. The first one was, uh, I can't remember his name. It was the crab monster for Lost Galaxy that had the Elvis hair and the Elvis voice. Damn. And that line that he was saying whenever he was rowing. <laughs> And the second thing that I remember was actually the first episode of Lightspeed Rescue when <laughs> they were uh, finally about to defeat that demon. They were saying, you ain't got it in you. They blast them, turn around, start totaling their guns, and then let that uh, explosion hit behind them. Ever since then, I was hooked. And then it got to a certain point where I just started getting into the habit of like doing a bunch of poses or doing their poses and stuff edit it with the audio like trying to get the timing right for like all five uh shots and stuff and then just upload what i got put together and that ended up being like what i tend to get known for when i was coming up in the community and i was seeing you and what you did i directly associated you to to lightspeed rescue even though i hadn't seen the show I knew about your love for it, and that is one of the many factors that pushed me into watching the show ultimately because I really wanted to see what it was all about. Um, but I want to know, what was your favorite parts of Lightspeed Rescue, and how did it inspire you in your life? I already know for a fact, one of my favorite things about Lightspeed was, of course, that first episode. It's a few, like, small things about it that's very similar to the dumpster that I liked. Uh, of course, I liked the cast. They were all great. Keith Robinson, who played uh, Joel, who's also been in Dreamgirls and Bad Albert, he's probably my favorite uh, Ruby Ranger of all time. And the Zords, because I'm always going to love the Zords from the season. Uh, the Mega Zords are, were also pretty cool in the show. I like how they utilized them. Like, they would trade them off. Like, they would have multiple Mega Zords at their disposable. Uh, but considering the situation, they would, like, pick and choose which one they want to go in. The Morph itself, I kind of like how significantly different it is from uh go go five because go go five seems like it might be a bit easier but there's something about i guess with the pops on their wrists yeah. that they do on the wrist they hit that so damn well it is hard to do as well as them honestly some of the story beats like with the uh titanium ranger even though we didn't get him much what we got what we did get from them was great uh captain mitchell and the spare weather i love them all and since we've had the chance to go to conventions like Power Morphicon and meet a lot of these actors. What has it been like meeting some of these people from Lightspeed? Honestly though, no, still to this day, nothing can top the uh, experience in 2022. One of the Lightspeed actors that we first talked to was Captain Mitchell's actor. Uh, he and I started talking for a bit. I told him that I had just become a firefighter like a few months before that. He was just talking about how like I guess impressed that he was that uh, I ended up growing up to become a firefighter, and even though like Lightspeed wasn't like my motivation for it, it was kind of, it was kind of like two parallel lines that just happened to uh, come up at the same time. Like I just grew to like Lightspeed more, and 
you know, I just ended up uh, becoming a firefighter through like detours in life and stuff. The same thing for Keith Robinson as well. I had, uh, it was a short conversation with him again, but uh, we were talking for a bit. I was talking about how uh, my mom loved him in Drinking Girls and I loved him in the Bad Albert movie. And he's <laughs> he's just a cool guy as well. Very talented singer too. And, and uh, he let, he actually let me wear uh, his Light to Be Rescue jacket as well. And I already knew who, for years now that I wanted that jacket, but that moment was when I was like, if somebody were to make this jacket, I need to buy it. <laughs> I need to get it. 10 months later, uh, since I jackets announced this and I got it for quite a bit, but I got it. <laughs> Would you tell us how much it was? Can we cut the cameras off? Uh, but about all all your firefighter stuff, I know you've been working hard for it. I know even during PMC, you you were studying for oh, it. Man. Um, yes, that oh was my crazy. God. How has that experience been like on the field, and how would you compare it to stuff that you saw on TV? I think that's Carter's jacket too. You're wearing right. Yeah, I'm wearing uh, his patches right now. Just a difficult task, just getting through the uh, training process and graduating and going through my rookie months of it. Technically, I'm still a rookie since I've only been out in the field for not even two years at this point so and i was honestly very reluctant to even become a firefighter because it's just i at the time i felt like it was going to make me just stop becoming an actor in general but after i learned about some details about it from my stepdad and stepbrother uh they, they kind of convinced me to do it kind of had to tough it out with uh getting through all the physical training, all the uh, mental challenges I had to go through, all the nonstop studying for 14 months straight, even at Power Morphicon, like you had said earlier. The biggest benefit I got out of it was just the good schedule and how much overtime I've been working for this collection as well. Because if it wasn't for that overtime, I wouldn't even be wearing this jacket. We got to appreciate all the work you do and um, wrapping it up here. Uh, if you want to give a message out to anybody, and the people, I know you do great work out there. Um, you're an actual, you can, you're an actual ranger in, in, in some regards for the stuff you do for the for the good of other people. Uh, just go ahead, spread some love out there real quick. Life, especially nowadays, this is gonna be tough. There's gonna be a lot of things that you have to deal with. So, just as much as it's easier said than done, keep your head up. Things are always gonna be difficult, but there's always gonna be stuff you can enjoy out of life, especially if you have friends or family that you can enjoy life with or can help you out or whatever. Do your best. So ultimately, the big question I had for this video is, Lightspeed Rescue an underrated season? Maybe a bit. If it is, probably not that much because I know a lot of people uh, nowadays, they do tend to enjoy Lightspeed on a certain level. There are some people that like straight up hate the season of Call of Boring. It was like, hey, that, that. I mean, the villains may be a bit boring, but like, the rest of the season, come on. It, it's a chill season. It's kind of a, it's damn near a laid back season. Austin, where can the people find you? Technically, you could find me on YouTube as One Man Sentai, all in one word, but I haven't even uploaded anything on there in like six years, I want to say, maybe seven. Uh, you can find me on Twitter as Austin Jones Six, or my nickname's gonna be Omni Ranger on there as well. You can find me on TikTok and Instagram as Omni Ranger. Is it cool if we do a quick light speed pose to transition back to me? Oh, dude, you already know. <laughs> All right, best set. Ready? Ready. <laughs> light speed. Rescue. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Austin. Good for effort. <laughs> wow, light speed rescue really is. The pin some one of the pinnacles of Power Rangers and definitely a great season to watch if you haven't seen it. And looking back on that one IMDB review talking about how oh, it's no more magic, it's all real life and demons and stuff. It's what made Lightspeed Rescue different and definitely a low-key fan favorite out there. And since all the episodes of the show is on YouTube to watch for free, it's more available than ever. I don't know why it took me so long, but I'm really glad I did give Lightspeed Rescue a chance. And if we were to rate it with the SA rating system, I would give it 3.5 stars. I enjoyed it. And honestly, you would too. If you've seen Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. 
Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, you know, Fuego. I'm also on Instagram, Mato on Fuego. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you're at. And of course, and as always, stay awesome, everybody.